Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. All right, no, I just want to tell you this. Every single time you wake up in the morning, God has a specific opportunity for you. I bet you didn't even think about that when you woke up. But literally, when you open your eyes and when you set foot on your bed and you plant your little feet, know that there is opportunities that God has laid before you every single day. And I believe that it's beyond just an opportunity, but I really believe that we're in a time that God is giving us great opportunities. And with great opportunities come a great opposition. And I'm super stoked about those oppositions. And so opportunity is this. It's a good chance for advancement. I'm going to come a little forward. And progress. And another definition my mom gave us was it's a combination of circumstances for a favorable purpose. And so when I hear this definition, I'm like, yes, Lord, bring on the opportunities. I'm called. I'm geared. I'm ready. But then again, we have to remember opportunities sometimes are disguised like so beautifully in really hard situations and really tragic moments and things where we feel like that that is it, I'm done, I'm quitting, I'm giving up. But in that fight that you have, know that God is saying, I provided you a way out, here's the opportunity, will you take it today? And that's what God is asking you. And so know this, God will never leave you and he'll never forsake you. And so if you could open your Bibles to Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. And when you're there, say hallelujah. I better hear that word said hallelujah though. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not going to you say it. Hey, God is good. Okay, guys. All right, Deuteronomy 31, 6 says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. It says, um, do not panic before them, for the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And he's saying, be strong and courageous, Pastor Felicia. He's saying, be strong and courageous, Aaron, Kate, Dave, Hannah, beautiful mother, be strong. He's saying all the way you in the back row, third seat, be strong and courageous and do not panic for them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. And I believe that there is such a fierce urgency taking place right now for God's people to awaken and to rise up to knowing who he is and knowing who you are. Because once you know who he is in your life, Nothing, nothing, no one, no situation can ever derail you. And I'm telling you this from experience. You think that as, you know, growing up in a ministry house and pastor's kids and everything is so beautiful and dandy. But let me tell you, if anything, we have a big old target on our forehead that says, come and shoot me here because we're doing what God has called us to do. But I'm telling you this, when you know who God is in your life, nothing Nothing can stop for you. He says, I personally go ahead of you. How great is that? That the creator of the universe will personally go ahead of you and me. That's just like mind-blowing. And so you may ask, well, how do I get my promise? How do I get from point A to point Z with all these opportunities that you speak of? And so the key is this. When God places before you an opportunity, it's happening in the journey that he's placed you on. Each one of us have a different journey. And I think where we get caught up, for sure, where I get caught up, I'm like, well, why can't I have her journey? She has it all together. She looks good. She can sing good. You know, she has a man. You know, I want her journey. Okay, Lord? Like, I want her journey. Let's be real. But God is saying, but you don't even know, though, what it took to get into that journey. It took to get into every single one of those blessings. You don't know what it takes to be in my shoes. I don't know what it takes to be in your shoes. But God is saying, enjoy the journey ahead of you, the opportunities he had. You're the only person with your DNA, with your fingerprint. No one can take that. So live this life fully for him. That's a side note for you. You can take that. I'm just kidding. And so um, take that opportunity. And you know what's so funny is that I used to think opportunities equal success. I mean, I believe that. I was like, yeah, God, like it's going to equal to my success. But no, opportunities of God is not even meant for success. Opportunities of God is literally meant for your heart to be aligned with his. That's the sole purpose of it. It's to make our heart right before him. That's an opportunity. Not singing in front of a million people, not your book selling like amazing or your, your business going up. I mean, God wants to bless you, but the point is, is that our hearts be right before God because when that happens, the blessings just overflow into your life. And so um, we're going to read James 1, 2 through 4, and you can put that on there. 
on the screen. Okay. It says, I'm sorry, guys. I swore I wouldn't do this. <laughs> My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Ugh. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And so by those who refuse to stay in the midst of chaos, if you refuse to stay in the guck and in the mire in this horrible situation you may be in, those are the people who will go directly into the land and to the promises that God has for them. If you need to get up today and to rise up today, then do it tonight. Tonight is your opportunity. You coming to church was already taking that one step to do what God is calling you to do. And it doesn't have to be ministry. It doesn't have to be crazy things. It's just, what are you going to do today? Who are you going to forgive? Who are you going to love? Who are you going to let go of? Okay, things that shouldn't even be in your life. What, what opportunity is God giving you today? And so there's a perfect story in the Bible, and it's like my favorite because it reminds me of us as Christians. And it's the Israelites, right? How many of you know the Israelites? Bless them, God. Bless them. And so we know that they were in, right, they were going through the Exodus, right? So the Egyptians were taking them into slavery. They're being beat up, just crazy, just craziness. And so then God is like, okay, I'm going to provide a way out for you. I have a promised land for you, so here we go. And so they go. God is so good. He gives them bomb food from heaven called manna, okay. He provides it falling from the sky, like I'm down, God, you know. And then he also frees them consistently. And then he also splits a huge big old sea for them with fishes like just swimming right behind them just like all around and they don't even drown and then after everything that God has done for them you know what they did they did what you and I usually do and that's complain and that's grumbling I mean not you guys me though but that's complaining that's grumbling I mean they they honestly out of everything God took them out of every single thing they still complained they grumbled they 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 talked they just talked bad about God. I'm like, come on, people. But what should have taken only 11 days took them 40 years. What's taking you 40 years? You know? What's taking us 40 years? What's taking us two years? God is a God who will work on your behalf in such a quick and swift manner. And 11 days may seem like a lot to us, but but what God wants to do with you, he wants to speed it up because the time is coming where our God is coming back for us. And there's no time to waste. That's what I'm saying. The time is now for us to arise. The time is now for us to face those opportunities. The time is now for us to get up, shake off the dust, and to finally go into everything God has called us to do. And so, you know, they, they complain. And, and I know that personally I've, I've gone and I complain. And so it's so easy. You just want to tell everyone your crap. I can say crap here. You just want to tell everyone your crap. Sorry, guys. Tell everyone, you know, your stuff. You go to Sister Tell It All. You go to Brother Stir Up Your Anger. Like, you just do it all. And you're just like, this is what is going on. And God is saying, just come to me. Come to me. I'm going to literally replay what happened to me last night. I was on my knees. And I said, why, God? Why me? My parents serve you. I serve you. I flow for you. I give everything every Sunday. I give everything every Wednesday. Why me? And you don't understand. I was on my knees crying tears out, asking God why. But this is what I did afterwards. I got up and I said, but God, you're faithful. But God, you're good. But God, I know that you rescued my family, that you literally saved us, that you literally saved my mom when she was dying, that you literally saved my dad when he should be dead, that you saved my brother when he was supposed to be aborted, that you saved me. I shouldn't even be speaking. I shouldn't even be alive, that you even created Elevate Church. And I went through the line like, God, 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 this is what you did. This is what you did. And so know this, that even in the times of opportunities where it feels like everything is crashing down, that you can go and you can complain everything to God, but you always have to have a but God. You are faithful in my life, but God, you will take me out of this, but God, we will go through this and I will see everything restored. And so that's how you have to talk to yourself. It's okay to complain. Complain to God. He loves you. He already knows you're jacked up. So just go to him already. Like, stop. But I'm serious. Always have a but God. That's the key to everything. That's the key with David in the Bible. He had a but God. But God. Okay. So we fast forward and now we have Joshua and he's been um, chosen to lead the people into the promised land. He was like Moses' right hand. And so let's open up our Bibles to Joshua 1, 1 through 6. Say hallelujah when you're there. 
All right. All right, it'll be on the screen too. So it says this, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, and you and all this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea towards going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And then the next one. Oh, that's it. Joshua 1, 13. Beautiful. So we skip forward to 13. Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is giving you rest and is giving you land. When you go through doors of opportunities, he will not only give you land, but he'll give you rest. You don't have to be suffering your whole life. There will be moments that you have to go through some stuff, but he's not a God who makes you suffer. Okay? That's like number one. He doesn't put bad things in your way. He doesn't put cancer in your way. Okay? He doesn't put uh, divorce in your way. No. That's, that's not our God, but he'll take a bad situation around and he'll turn it for your good. That's our God. And so if you continue reading on in Joshua, there's like a million times, like, my mom gives you homework, so you're going to have to do my homework too. Go read Joshua. Literally within the first chapter, he says, be strong and of good courage. And he's like, oh, be of very good courage. Oh, be strong and courageous. Like, he says it multiple times. And so this is the key. When you're going into those opportunities, you have to be strong and you have to be courageous. This is not for anyone who is like, (laughs) This is for people, and it's okay to be like that for a moment. Trust me. That was me. Pastor Felicia, like, prayed it out of me. I was like, yes, God. And I was like, God, I don't want to do this. But you know what? God has not given your spirit of fear, but one of power, one of love, and one of a sound mind. And so surround yourself with people that will speak life to you. Like, if I didn't have Felicia with me, I don't know what I would do. My friend from college is here, Hannah, Hannah the lovely Um, You know, if I didn't have her, there's moments where I was sitting and I was like, I can't do this, God. Like, I'm about to lose my mind. I text her like, hey, my friend, can you just pray for me? And she prayed for me. Like, to know that I have a friend that would pray that's like miles away from me, but yet still is there in prayer. Like, I felt that strength. So do not isolate yourself. Come to Elevate Men and come to Devoted. Meet friends. Meet people to gather around. That's a plug. So you better come. (laughs) This Saturday, Elevate Men. Let me hear my men. I better see you all there. All right. (laughs) Okay. All right. No, but it's so, it's so meaningful when you encourage. And so a side note, my mom, so we used to do this thing with my family. We're like, uh, let's, well, we still do. Let's encourage each other. So I was like, dad, encourage me. And he's like, you're strong. You're beautiful. You're anointed. I was like, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And so we'd go around, right? And my brother were like, yeah, you're fierce. You're okay. So it'd come to my mom and it would be me encouraging her. And I was like, mom, you're brave. You're fearless. You're courageous, you're brave, you're fearless. Like, I couldn't say anything else, and every single time we would give encouragement, there was nothing else that would come out of my mouth. And so she hated it for such a long time. She's like, why do you guys get different words, and I get brave, fearless, and courageous? (laughs) Mom, God's trying to talk to you. (laughs) No, but but actually, in reality, it's so funny. It's funny now. Like, we were like 9, maybe 10 saying this, yeah? And it's funny now, because years later, who would have known that we actually prophesied into your life? Because my mom, every day, has to live brave, she has to live fearlessly, and she has to live courageously. And she has always owned up to each three of those words. And we still can't give her those words until maybe Jesus comes. Those are the only words she gets. But literally, like, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) But it was, you know, but, but like, surround yourself with people who will encourage you because you need that. It's foolish. It says in the Bible it's stupid to even isolate yourself. It says in the Bible, so don't cast a stone at me. Just kidding. (laughs) So if we look, we keep on looking. Joshua had a choice. You know, he he now has to lead these people. He has stubborn people. He has people who don't want to change their mentality. It meant it's just craziness, right? 40 years, what should have taken them 11 days? In the natural, it's easy for him to get bitter. It's easy for him to be like, you know what, Caleb, homie, like we're out. Like let's go. We'll go by ourselves. But they chose to follow God with all their heart. And as God opened the doors, were there trials? Yes. 
but he went through those doors and he was the one to take the Israelites into the promised land. And so watch your heart every single day. I always pray this, create in me a clean heart, God, and renew in me a steadfast spirit. Because I want my heart right before him. Before anything else, that's all I want. If I don't do anything in this life, if I don't sing another song, if I don't, I'm being, I'm being very honest. As long as my heart was right before him, I'm okay. And so that's the key. As long as your heart is right before him, you're okay. Like, that's it. And so, what is that opportunity in front of you that is the key to your promise? I asked myself this today. I was like, what is the opportunity that you placed in front of me that's the key to my promise? And I want you to ask that for yourselves. And when I found out the opportunity, I was like, thank you, God. It was like loving people. <laughs> it was like great. But honestly, ask yourself that because that very opportunity that you're procrastinating on that you don't want to do will be the very thing that halts you from the very purpose that God has for your life. So don't be afraid. Take it from me. The courage, Lee, lion. Courageous lion. And God is saying, honestly, he's giving you word and he's saying, um, He's saying, you know, daughter and son, like, just do it. Just go for it. Just be courageous. And so my mom gave you two powerful points. So I'm going to need you to write this down just in case you didn't have it. It says, she said, seek Jesus. She said, praise, which is my favorite one. And the third one I would give you this day is to know who God is. And I don't mean just reading your Bible. I mean know who God is. Okay, out of all the years that I've been in ministry with my family, like, I would be the one sleeping under the chairs at two, like, running around. Like, so whenever I see the Stamps kids, like, I love them because it's just, I see, like, a snapshot picture of my family. I'm like, I get it, you know? And so this was my life, but it's not until this year, now I'm 22, but it's not until this year that I feel like I know who he is and I know that nothing can take what he promised me and my family away from me. No one nothing. And I'm super fierce. Like if you talk to me, Jesus, you know, but I know it's turning it around for good, God. But no, I'm serious. Nothing. You can't convince me otherwise. No, my God is good. Have I faced super hard things in my family? Yes. And sometimes we want to throw in the towel, but God is so good. And once you know that, I'm telling you, I just discovered it this January. I discovered, my mom was like, who the heck are you? Like, you're different, Alexis. And it's because I know who he is in my life. And so I'm going to give you a little snapshot. If you come on Sundays, my dad does cute little drawings. Don't tell him I said cute, but they're cute. So I'm going to do it myself. Also, I'm his twin. So if you ever see him and you see me, like, I'm literally the girl version of him with hair. <laughs> That's just a side note. <laughs> I don't like this color. I'm just going to sing you guys a song as I do this. Hold on, wait a minute. God loves you. Hey. <laughs> this is me every day. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> These are my pretty pictures. I even have writing like my dad is pretty insane. Okay, I love my dad. All right, guys, so this is what I had to do. Literally, I did this actually even before my mom asked me to preach. Because I was actually, presently, I'm going through a grand opportunities right now that's been very hard for me, but God. Okay, 2003, okay, this is my family's life. This is just a little taste of my family's life. This is not even scratch the surface. 2003... I was nine years old. My dad was, um, some of you may know this, my dad was, um, he got a rare form of cancer called Hopkins lymphoma. Literally, the doctor before him died, okay? A doctor who knows how to take care of himself died, okay, from this disease. So in the natural, my dad doesn't know anything. He loves tacos. I mean, he doesn't do the healthy prescriptions. I mean, he's been healthy his whole life, and then all of a sudden, it's side rails. My dad's in the hospital. There's no hope. They're like, he's a, he, man, he's a dead man walking already. And um, at nine years old, this is hard for us. Isaac was like, what, one, five? Okay, sorry, <laughs> one. <laughs> we're nine years apart. <laughs> we're, we're five years apart. <laughs> All right, he was five, guys. And four. Jesus. Okay, so, so you have to understand this. Okay, we have a mom. They both serve in the church. All right, my dad serves faithfully. My mom serves faithfully. He has this disease. Isaac and I were like, Mom, it's okay. You're going to the hospital. You're staying with Dad. 
we're okay. Okay, a nine-year-old said that, all right? Do you understand this? With the rare form of cancer, my dad, okay? And my brother with me. And I was like, you go take care of dad, we'll be fine. And so I prayed, Isaac and I prayed, we're like, God, my dad's going to live. My dad's not going to die. Thank you, Jesus, that you saved him already, that you already know his plans. And so we said it every single day. Even during this time, I got an ear infection, and they told my mom, if you didn't even bring your daughter here, she would have lost hearing in her left ear, okay? So these are like multiple things happening. And so we decided, you know what, no, we're going to seek God because he's faithful. It doesn't matter how much we serve him. He doesn't care. I mean, he cares. But that's not why he loves you. He loves you because he created you and he purposed you and he he loves you beyond what you do understand that one and so so you know we're doing this and then I remember um God God literally told my dad he's like okay you have a choice he's like you could either fight Mauricio or I can take you home this is literally what my dad had these two options and he was like well I'm not afraid you know to go home to be in heaven with Jesus uh, but and he's not afraid of his family like he knew that we'd be okay but the one thing he was afraid of was that he always ran from the call God placed on him. My dad, who's like super bold, ran every time they asked him to speak. And he said, okay, God, he's like, if you would save me, I won't ever again run away from what you called me to do. And what did God do after months? He saved him. And my dad started speaking. And my dad started talking. And so it was that one opportunity in the face of death that God rescued him. And he started speaking, right? So it's starting to speak, 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 speak. Then we go to 2010, old good, good old new life. If you weren't here back then, woo! Let me tell you this one. That was a big old opportunity. <laughs> yes, God. All right, let me tell you this, guys. Okay, imagine four people in a family, okay? The Lord, you know, they got another opportunity, the Lord. <laughs> They got another opportunity from another person. They're like, you know what? We believe that this is the church that God is calling you to preach, right? If you believe in God, he'll speak to you. Okay. They took like forever to fast. Like they fasted for like 20 years and it's like, we're ready to do the answer. And so they fasted and they said, okay, yes. Oh my God. It was hell. When we opened New Life, I mean, it was good now, but it was hell. You know, I'm not, I'm being serious. People would be rude to my parents. And if you're rude, I'm going to cut you. But they'd be rude. I'm just kidding. I'm changed. I'm changed. No, but <laughs> I need to stop. They would be rude to my parents, okay, like in meetings, just flat out rude, all right? And then they have to put up with a 15-year-old daughter who wouldn't speak to them for three months, okay? Me. And I even told them, once I'm 18, I'm leaving your church. This is your congregation. I want nothing to do with it. And that was plain and simple. I was like, I'm gone. I'm bouncing. Like, that's it. And I had to worship here. I was like, Jesus is Lord. And, um, <clears throat> but if they, yeah. But if they didn't decide to take in 2010 that one step when it was hard, and you know how hard it was. You know. And if they didn't take that step, then Elevate Church wouldn't be here. And see, when you go into your opportunity, little do you know, like I said, it's to make your heart right before God. And so also, you also make room for other people to get into their opportunity. It's not all about you. It's about God, his kingdom, and people around us. And so because they said yes, you can give it a clap. Hey. Yeah, no. Because they said yes, Pastor Felicia, you're here. Okay, we can't do worship or creative stuff without her. Because you said yes, all right, we have now the Stamps family who were with us from beginning. Like, we love you guys. And your plans are amazing. And they're a yes and amen. So don't ever let the enemy speak anything or get in between you two and your family. Because God's going to use you. Because they said yes, they said yes. Okay? Because they said yes, my grandpa is here. My grandma is here. My tío Kike is here who was like crazy. All right? <laughs> but he's amazing now. And because they said, yes, you're here tonight in your seat. Do you understand that? It's a, it's a ripple effect. It doesn't stop. You won't even know that your yes may produce the next person to leave millions and millions to Christ. You don't know. So don't be afraid. When you say yes to God, heaven roars. Heaven roars. Okay, we're going to keep going. 2012 is my favorite story. 2012. All right, I'm almost done. 2012. Jesus, this year was great. Okay, so I started doing worship, right? I've always been a background singer. I was like, I don't want to be front row singer. 
And so, um, that's how intense I am. I was right here, literally. This is probably where I was standing. I was playing the piano. I just started playing, and we were singing Break Every Chain. And I was like, ah. Oh. And then all of a sudden, if you know, yes, if you know, if you're a musician or a singer or how can carry a tune, imagine someone who knows how to sing not being able to carry the tune at all because I can't hear it. Can't hear it. So it's like, there is power in. And then I started bawling on stage like, ah. It looked like I was like manifesting. And then I ran off the stage and I was like, doom, 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 straight there. And then took a little left to that corner. I was done. My dad's like, what happened? Oh, and we had a guest speaker that day, and he was from uh, he was from Africa. And so he came up, and he did break a routine African style, and my team wasn't ready for that, but it was amazing. It was so good. It was so good. I was like, yes, God. So it was so good. So I remember standing with my dad in the back, and he was like, Alexis, what happened? I was like, I don't know, and I don't care. I'm done. I'm throwing in the towel. I'm finished, done. And so he was, like, encouraging me like any dad would and any pastor would. And I was like, you know, I'm like, just leave me alone. So I, I asked everyone to get out of the office. I was like, just leave me alone, okay? And so I remember just standing there, and I was like, okay, God. I said, supposedly you, I literally said that. I said, supposedly you called me to worship. So, but, I mean, you don't, you know, you don't know anything. I know it all. But supposedly you called me to worship. But it doesn't make sense because every Sunday I cry, God. Every Sunday I came home crying. Okay, it doesn't make sense, God, because I can't even hear the song. And then that's when I started to form. But God, if you said it, then I'm done. And you have to get to the place where you're so tired of where you're at. You're so tired of where you've been. You're so tired of how you feel that you say, no, if God is for me, then who can be against me? I have nothing to fear. If you've given me this gift, if he's called you to do this, then there's nothing to be afraid of. So I got back up on that stage at the 1 p.m., and that was the day that literally everything broke in me. And I began to develop this thing called prophetic flowing, and I started doing a lot more things, and I fell some more, and I cried some more. But it led me to this day. Good old 2017. So 2017, that's how many, three, four, five, six, seven, great, five years. So five years, okay, I'm in development. I was asked uh, by a good friend of mine to join him in Mexico, and it's called the March of Glory, which is a big, huge event where literally thousands and thousands, like, and then they had to close down the event because there was too many people, and if they were on the streets, like, it would create a hazard. And so they asked me to come, and I was like, hey, chill. I was like, first of all, I don't speak fluent Spanish, okay? Number two, I've never felt really, I meant, to be honest, I've never felt connected with my culture. I, I meant, okay, I'm going to say this. I'm probably going to get in trouble. Um, so I grew up in Woodland Hills, right? So I was always the only Hispanic. So I asked my mom. I was like, Mom, am I white? Yeah. I did. I swear I did. <laughs> I promise you I did. I was like, Mom, am I white? I wanted to be you. You know what I'm saying? Just kidding. I was like, Mom, am I white? And then that's when she was like, like okay, you think the other talk was hard? This was hard. Because she was like, well, baby, like, if you see, you know, you have a different pigment. We're from Mexico and Salvador. So you're Hispanic. I was like, great. Anyways, <laughs> my homies, though. So I felt really comfortable with them. Anyways, so I mean, I never grew up around my culture. You know, I never grew up in Spanish churches or, or any even diverse. I mean, we were the only Latinos there. You know? And so everything's flooding my memory. I'm like, God, I'm like, you literally picked a white Hispanic girl to go to Mexico and minister. <clears throat> And so my friend said, yeah, and also we want you to bring your song Invade. And I was like, nope, you're not having my song. And I made up, like, so many excuses. Literally the week, and we've been planning this for, like, three months. <laughs> and so the week of, he's like, no, you're bringing your song. And I was like, okay. And so I had the song translated. I went to Mexico. Even greater opportunities, I got to meet with this amazing band from Chiapas. And, like, they're like, okay, let's connect. Let's do something. Let's record. I was like, okay. And then, um, and then also... I went, I sang it before all those people, and let me tell you, it was a heart check. I had to check my heart. Sorry, I'm looking at the time. I checked my heart because I was like, okay, Lord, humble me, Jesus. And then, um, and then now because I did that, if you see, okay, all this, all this pain, this was pain. This was for sure pain. But it led up to this, and what I'm trying to tell you is this. As you make your heart right before God in opportunities that he's placed in you, that he's, it's not that the opposition stops. It's that your character is being grinded. Like Sogol says, it's a pressing. And that press is creating that anointing that's flowing out of your life. And because of that, Mexico might have seemed harder for me five years ago. 
okay. Not anymore. I said yes to everything I went to. Because when you choose to surrender your life, when you choose to surrender your process, God is saying, okay, I trust you. And now things are a little bit more easy for me to go into. And that's what God wants to do with you. And now, actually, they asked me, um, there are many people asking about that song. So now I'm going to be going back to Mexico in a few months and recording Invade as a single there, as well as here, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, point is this, guys. Okay, here's my point. I want to tell you this, is that now is your time, okay? Um, you may be, I don't know, 50s, 60s, 20, 10, 9, 1. It doesn't matter where you're at. The time is now, okay? The time for you to forgive is now. The time for you to ask for forgiveness is now. The time for you to write that book that God has been telling you to write is now. The time for you to write that song, yes, is now. It's our time is now. Your time is now. With sound and with other things God has for you, your time is now. Your time is now, you beautiful couple right there, Rodolfo and Jen. Your time is now. And so God is saying, will you take this time I've given you? Because we're not promised tomorrow, guys. We only have today. And that's in the Bible. I'm not trying to spook anyone. But we only have today. And so what are you going to do with the opportunity God has given you? Because I can tell you this, it creates in you a resilient spirit to always follow him and to always serve him, to always trust him. So do something today. Just do it. Get over yourself. Because in the end, you never know where God's going to take you. And I still don't know where God's going to take me. And I know that God's plans for you are yes and amen. They're already final. And it extends beyond anyone. He plays no favoritism. He plays no favoritism. Just because we're in ministry doesn't mean diddly squat. God loves you for who you are. And so remember that. Amen. Go ahead. Thank you. I think we can go home. Wow. I'm going to cry. I'm literally going to cry. So proud of her. I've always been crying since everything that she's done. I was the only parent crying in her play when she was wooed off. <laughs> always. Number one fan. But um, this, uh, this series, uh, Just Do It, came from a season that we'll, we feel that it's, it's the God opportunities. I believe it's a prophetic message. I really believe it. it I, I feel that it's a prophetic voice coming from heaven. And he wants us to recognize what his opportunities look like. Because many of us have missed God opportunities. It, there are some opportunities that you're never going to get back. May I be honest with you? But I'm going to tell you that our God is our redeemer. Because many times, I love what she said, and let me give you the first scripture, Matthew 6, um, 33 and 34. Like, I love to quote Matthew 33. It's, uh, as a matter of fact, it's one of our uh, scriptures for our home. It have always stood. But then we always forget verse 34. And this is what it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I believe that many times as Christians, we are so already set in our ways, in our thinking, how God is going to do it. I, I can honestly tell you that I have missed some opportunities because they didn't look they were delivered to my lap, and I didn't like the wrapping. It wasn't what I thought the opportunity was going to look like. So many times when we're coming to the Lord, we think the opportunities are just going to be like an amazing door, and they are amazing opportunities. But they always, like my daughter said, they always come with opposition. The opportunities of God, if you read from Genesis to Revelation, they always come with conflict. We always come with trials. We always come with tribulation. Jesus took the opportunity to give us life, 
but it took for him to die. Like, oh, can you imagine if you're chosen to give life to, to, to the rest of the world, but in order for you to give life, that means you have to die. And I don't think we like that. I want to be known to be a giver of life, but I don't want to die to myself. I want to be known to be a, a woman that is um, in love with Jesus, but don't put me with people that I don't feel comfortable. So whenever God, and every day is an opportunity, every day is an opportunity. And I think many times I have lived in regret. How many of you have lived in regret? It sucks to live there, right? It's painful to live there. And I'm not here to tell you that if you've been living in regret, God wants you to know that he is going to redeem your time. Some of, some of, people, some of the people are, are an opportunity that I can say that you will never, it will never return to you. will be like uh, maybe you were not a good father when your kids were little. Maybe you were absent. Maybe you were doing your thing. And now your child is 40 and 30 and now you can't buy him a tricycle anymore. Maybe your girl grew up and you were not there for her, but now she's 25 and she's married. She doesn't want nothing to do with you, but you can't buy her a doll anymore. That's okay. But you can come back to the present and see the opportunity that you have today to win your kids now. But what can I do about my kids now? I can't fix my past. I cannot go back and I, I cannot gain the time that was given to me. That's gone. But now you're in the present. It's a gift. Today is a gift. It's called the present, right? But when we live in regret, we live in our past. And we're constantly thinking about our future because we're so dissatisfied with our present because we remember the opportunities that we missed in our past. And so we are fed up with our present, and we already see a bleak future ahead. And I believe that God is telling us, I love what my daughter said, that God is asking us, and I believe God is asking us, I'm speaking to myself to say, wake up. Wake up and, and seize the moment. This is your time. This is your time. Do not let another day pass you by. Do not let another day, if you haven't reconciled with your family, you reconcile tonight. Because tomorrow is not here yet. And so for, for me to, to, to see, uh, I, I, like I said, I, I, I see everything. And sometimes uh, I was sharing with, um, with one of my girls. I was, I was telling them, like, everything that my family have done, every God opportunity that he has given us, it has been very painful. But if we have done something right, it's raised our kids. I never regret the times that they were sitting on, on the chairs of the church. I don't regret that. I don't regret missing a party because someone needed us and, and they needed someone to go pray for, for them. We were not pastors, but we knew what it means to be broken. We know what it means to be messed up. We know what it is to be hopeless. And people will call us at 1 in the morning. Can you come over? And we will pack our kids in the car and go there. And you know, many times, because I've been thinking a lot, many times I sat there and I thought, why did they call other people? Because I love to sleep. <laughs> I'm not the, uh, oh, like, oh, God, you're waking me up. No. Like, why are you waking me up? You see, that's where Alexis gets her thing. <laughs> Her feistiness. But I, through, through, through our journey, many times I, I, I question if there were God opportunities. Because I had to wake up my kids at one in the morning. But I'm here to tell you that this year, I think, is the greatest year that God has given me. This is the do Literally, the Lord said, this is the year of opportunities for you, Virginia. So you know what that means, right? And sometimes we can get exhausted. Exhausted of the process. I've always, we have always told our kids, you complain, 
complain all you want, complain to God. So that makes me happy to hear. He might be complaining about us, but it makes me happy that he's complaining to the Father, right? Because he's never afraid. Complain to the Father, but always have a but. And through all this, I, I feel like God wants you to be okay with the God opportunity that he has given you. God wants you to know that if he's giving you that opportunity, it's already in you what you need. And we always laugh to this day, like Alexis said, uh, my, my words were like, you're brave, you're fearless, and you're courageous. And I really did not like those words. Because we did it every week, and I got the same words. I never got your pretty, you know, your intelligent. I was like, come on, I can give you some descriptions. <laughs> Here, in case you guys don't know about me, this is what I think about me. <laughs> You're a good cook, you know, all this. <clears throat> but you know what I came to realize, and we came to realize when we came to do this church, I said, my family prophesied over my life. My, my family prophesied that I will be brave because it's all those that she said in 2010 when she wouldn't speak to us and God calls, you know what that looks like? Having a teenager with a gray, feisty attitude and not wanting to come to where God, we always say we're a family ministry. We don't do things. We don't separate. We're, we're a family ministry. This is what God calls us to do. And she said, well, no, it's not. You didn't tell me. And then you're coming to church, right, where she said that, you know, it was really hard. But then I told the Lord, you will have to speak to her. One of my prayers that I have always prayed for my children is that they would they will have a relationship, personal relationship with God by themselves with their father. Not through us. Because we're, we're, we have failed them. We have made mistakes. But I love and I actually can honestly say that this year I told you, like, who are you? But in a good way. Because it made me great pleasure to see that, that what we choose to do for our children what we choose to follow God and your kids see you. They, they, your kids see you praying to the Father. You, your kids know what you go through. But they always see that you always turn your life and you obey God. And when you do that, if you have kids, then you have done well. Because they will follow your example. So if you have little ones here and you're always here in church, do not fear. Do not fear. That's a God opportunity. It's going to be amazing memories for them. Uh, maybe not too fun memories that you have to wake them up super early. But now, maybe it wasn't fun then. But then now my kids, when we think about something that God opportunities that God has given us, we have come to recognize that every God opportunity comes with great difficulty. But it's okay because God has given us his strength. It's okay because we have what it takes to just do it. And if you, if I can, if I can do my timeline and I'm very detailed, oh my goodness, you will be crying with me. About every opportunity that God has given me. But I'm going to say, say something. I have taken every opportunity. Because I told the Lord that I will never run from him. I will never run from what he has asked me to do. Even if it's hard. Even if I faint. Even if I puke. Even if I don't speak well. I will do what he has called me to do. And then as you do that, then you get stronger. Then you get stronger. And you get stronger. But I believe that there's many opportunities that God has been knocking at your door. There is something that he has been speaking you about, and he wants you to take it. He wants you to come into agreement with his word, and he wants you to say yes to him. And I'm going to give you my three points. Wow. Yeah, we're closing now. 
she did so good. I'm so proud of her. You're doing next Wednesday. <laughs> okay. She said that what we need to do is, this was my point, which, look, it's amazing. That we need to know God. Da Daniel 11.32 says this. Those who don't do wickedly against the covenant, he should corrupt with flattery. But this is the part that I love. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. He says, but the people who know their God. Have you forgotten who your God is? In situations that you have gone through that were so hard that you forgot who he is in your life. Does that ever happen to you? Only me? I have forgotten. Things that have been so hard in my life, I have forgotten. There were times and there have been times in my life that this was too much for me. And I want someone to fight for me. I want someone to, like I like to say, why, did I, why do I have to do this? Can somebody else do that? I want her life. That looks very easy. But we don't know what they're going through to be there. But it says those who know their God. It says they shall be strong and carry out great exploits. It's who you know. It matters who you know. You know, think about it. even social media. If you, if you, well, you don't really know, know the people. But if you're going out and you're eating and you see a celebrity, you want to post your picture of selfies. Like, well, look, you don't even know that person. But you want people to think that you know them, right? Because it matters that you know that person. It gives you a perk. It opens doors for you. And I'm going to tell you that God is saying to us tonight, I want you to know me. Like Alexis says, once we know who he is, yes, we're going to cry. Maybe we're going to puke. We're going to faint. But we get up. And that's what I always tell myself. Virginia, you can cry. You can puke. But you're getting up. You're getting up, and you're going to get your butt together, but not my butt, but the butt, B-U-T, right? But God, but God, you didn't bring us this far to drop us off here. God has not bring you, brought you this far to leave you where you are. God wants you to walk in great peace. God wants you to walk in great expectation. God doesn't want us to be afraid of, of, the, of, the, of the storms that are coming towards us because we win and we just got to do it. We just got to believe God. But not just believe him, but we have to know him. Because in Acts, I, I, don't, I don't know if I gave them my, my scripture, but the next scripture is where, where Paul says that even the, de even the demons believe God and they tremble. You know that we can believe in God, but it means nothing. But if you know him, but if you know him, like I always tell people, if people come to me and they tell me, like, this is what so-and-so said about you. It's like, if they really know who I am, if they really know me, they know I never said that. If they really know me. But if they don't know me, then I can see why they would think that. But I'm talking about those close relationships. So we need to know our God. And this is what I know about our God. I know that our God will never leave you and he will never forsake you. I know that our God is for you and he's not against you. I know that our God has plans for you and his plans are to prosper you. I know that he loves you. I know that he sent his beloved son to die for you on the cross so you can live a life that is worthy of his glory. I know that I, we have a God who paid a dear price so you and I don't have to live like hell or go through hell the entire times. No, we will encounter trials and tribulations, but we are never alone. We are never alone. You are never alone. I don't care how you feel tonight, but I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. You are not alone. God has not left you. He has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten you. He is for you. And you have to believe that tonight. You have to believe who he is. Because knowing, by knowing him, then we can be. Alexis read the scripture where, where, where God told Joshua, be courageous. Be of good cheer. He didn't say act courageously. We act out. 
our Christianity many times. I need to act like I'm strong. I need to act. No, he doesn't want you to act. He wants you to be what we cannot be until we know. So if you know him, knowing will cause you to become and to be. And when we be, then we can do things. Like he says, we can do great exploits for him. I'm here to tell you tonight that God has great exploits on your name. He wants to use you mightily. He wants his name to be known. He wants to be, he wants him to, people to know like, I know what he did with that rhinosis. There's no way that you can tell me that God does not exist, that God doesn't heal, that God doesn't restore. Because I know, I know this God that did that for them. I know the God that restored the Campusanos. I know what he's done for them. I know the God that restores. And we can mention people that we know that God has restored them. And then you remind yourself, if God did it for them, he's doing it for me. He's going to do it for my family. And I just have to believe it, but now do it. Because faith without works is dead. It's not just enough to quote the word, but it's, we have to become it. We have to do it. But it. He, by knowing him, and this is what I'm asking you as this year, we're like May already, like let's go in a pursuit of knowing who our God is. Because once we know who he is, and we, many times we're searching who are we in God. No, no, search God first, and then you'll find out who you are. And then you become what he has called you to do. And I'm going to tell you that then you will start saying yes to all the opportunities that God brings into your lap. Because then you're going to understand like, hmm, this is an opportunity for my growth. This is an opportunity for me to, for my maturity in Jesus. We can say that we're saved for 20 years, but it could be you're repeating the same year for 20 years. I don't want to say that I've been saved for 20 years and I have repeated my first year over and over, over and over. No, I want to say I've been walking with the Lord and have learned from glory to glory to glory to glory. And he will continue to do that in your life until he returns or you go home. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.